Hello and welcome to Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Adrian Atkinson. It's World Sickle Cell Awareness Day. Did you know that sickle cell disease is the most common genetic blood disorder? Well, did you know also that the disease affects millions of people worldwide and is common in African, Mediterranean and Arabian Peninsula areas? It's a good day to increase your knowledge and understanding of sickle cell disease and the challenges experienced by patients, their families and caregivers. Stick around for all the information we have to share in today's magazine. Yes, walk right over there and drop it in the bin. Reuse that wastewater from your kitchen for the garden. Get your hands dirty and plant a tree. Farmers, hold off on the pesticides, especially near our rivers. Do your part to protect our watersheds so we can preserve the source of our drinking water. Every act to protect our watersheds counts. Start now. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Monday, June 19, 2023. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says that the multi-million dollar housing development currently being undertaken at St. Paul's Lane in St. Andrew West Central is a model for how informal settlements can be transformed across Jamaica. Mr. Holness, who is a member of parliament for the area, conducted a site visit on Friday to see the progress being made on the project. The development is a collaboration involving the Housing Agency of Jamaica, the National Housing Trust, the Jamaica Social Investment Fund, the National Water Commission, and Astrum Building Systems Limited. In addition to providing housing, the initiative will improve access to vital amenities such as potable water and proper sewage systems. Prime Minister Holness says 12 more units have been added to the complex, bringing the total amount to 36 units. What we have decided to do is to create a program that can be scaled up and used and as, a, as an example in similar communities. Mr. Holness also visited the community of Compound, where CMEX Jamaica is using concrete to pave roadways. The residents are quite happy. It is going to uplift the community and uh, improve the quality of life of the residents here. The nation's schools will soon see even greater technological integration within the education sector. That's thanks to Friday's signing of a Memorandum of Understanding between the Universal Service Fund, USF, and eLearning Jamaica. The partnership will facilitate the continuation of tablet distribution and the installation of connectivity systems. Chief Executive Officer of USF, Daniel Dawes, says $1.2 billion was pledged to the National Broadband Initiative last year. A similar amount has been set aside to continue the program this financial year. This financial year, we have earmarked a $1.3 billion again to treat with the National Broadband Initiative. And this is about ensuring that our secondary schools and our primary schools are outfitted with reliable, high-quality broadband services. Meanwhile, Top Range and Standpipe in St. Andrew are the latest beneficiaries of the USF's community Wi-Fi program. The Wi-Fi systems were commissioned on Thursday, increasing connectivity and digital inclusion across the island. Education Minister and Member of Parliament for the Communities, Favel Williams, emphasized the need for responsible use and security when using Wi-Fi. We know that data plans are very expensive, and so to the extent that we can have this community Wi-Fi in our communities. I, you know, it's, it's just the greatest thing that can happen to communities across Jamaica. Principal of the Mountain View Primary and Infant School, Michelle Robinson, says the internet will help the school overcome one of its major challenges. Access. So we have students with devices, but no access. So it is a perfect in other news, pension regulators are being urged to boost the resilience of their systems as the industry continues to change. The call comes from Executive Director of the Financial Services Commission, Major Karen Borrell, 
who says fund supervisors must carry out their duties effectively to meet sector trends and regulatory updates. Major Burrell maintains that these will help supervisors make informed decisions that benefit pension plan members and beneficiaries. As pension plan supervisors, our responsibility is indeed immense. We can assist the financial future of countless individuals who rely on pension plans for their retirement security. By embracing sustainable investment practices, leveraging technological advancements, managing risks, fostering transparency, and committing to ongoing professional development. We can ensure that pension funds remain robust and resilient in the face of an ever-changing financial landscape. Major Burrell was speaking at a recent conference of the Caribbean Association of Pension Supervisors at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel in Kingston. The conference was held under the theme, Enhancing Protection, Building Resilience Amid Macro Uncertainty and Systemic Risk in the Pensions Industry. And finally, the Ministry of Health and Wellness is once again urging Jamaicans to give blood. Donations can be made at any of the 11 blood collection sites across the island. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Jacqueline Bisesa mckenzie says the blood donation will not only save lives, but it will also boost the island's reserves. She was speaking at the recent commissioning of a mobile blood collection unit. A country that is impacted by so many issues of trauma, from domestic and gun violence, as well as road traffic crashes, the more blood we have in reserve, the more we increase the chances of survival. Jamaicans between the ages of 17 and 60 who are in good health are encouraged to become regular donors. At the NBTS, an entity of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, our aim is to supply, and this says 75% of all blood requested on the island, but I'm going to be bold enough to say that we want to be able to supply 100% of the requests that comes in. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Sustaining our water, land and marine resources are just some of the ways to preserve life. Let's hear more about a project that has taken on the giant task of preserving the best of Jamaica for generations to come. Spectacular views of the Blue Mountains, the cradle for the Wadwater River watershed, one of Jamaica's 26 watersheds, and the source of 40% of the water for the Kingston metropolitan area. Fresh water rolls from these hills to the valley, supplying one of Jamaica's longest rivers, the White River, flowing for 27 kilometers past bamboo groves and lush vegetation, crossing the boundary lines of the northeastern parishes of St. Anne and St. Mary, to empty into the Ocherea's fish sanctuary and into the Caribbean Sea. A Jamaican path from hills to ocean. This is a story of a remarkable project to increase Jamaica's resilience to climate change by sustaining our watersheds, our coastlines, our land and marine resources, while empowering more Jamaicans with the required knowledge and awareness to secure their livelihoods in these spaces. The Hills to Ocean Project is funded by the European Union Global Climate Change Alliance Plus, in partnership with the Government of Jamaica to the tune of 6 million euros over five years. The project will implement integrated and sustainable landscape and coastal management interventions to tackle the thorny challenges of declining ecosystems, biodiversity loss, land degradation, and the vagaries of climate change affecting vulnerable communities in Jamaica. The project intends to stop erosion in selected water sheets to reduce degradation of important terrestrial habitats, sedimentation of the marine space, loss of soil productivity, and pollution of the rivers and streams for improper waste management. 
The restorative activities are therefore designed towards building climate resilience and transforming managing capabilities within affected ecosystems and communities. In the lower reaches of the watershed, the flow of the Wogwater River has slowed to a trickle in parts of the picturesque Castleton Botanical Gardens. For Oswald Eyre, a long-time resident of the Wagwater Valley and president of a local NGO working with 17 communities, the Hills to Ocean project is a welcomed addition to the ongoing efforts to restore the watershed. These are two big resources, Castletown Gardens and the Wagwater and its tributaries. In the early days, the Wagwater was most important for fishing, for recreation, for training we, everybody on the banks of the Wagwater, some 17 to 18,000 persons. By age 10 or so, they will be able to swim. There was a section of the river that we call Deep Hole. Very deep, and it retained water. And when rainfall is low, those deep holes will gradually feed the stream with water. And by the time they are exhausted, rain would come again and refill them. All that is gone today. The Hills to Ocean project will directly benefit Castleton Gardens and many other communities and residents who make their livelihood from key economic sectors like agriculture and tourism. There are three targeted watershed management units under the project. The Wagwater WMU, including Castleton Gardens, the Rio Nuevo WMU in St. Mary, and the Rio Bueno White River WMU in St. Anne and Trelawney. The project will also focus on wetland ecosystems at Winds Morass on the coast of Falmouth Trelawney and farther inland at the Mason River Protected Area at the border of St. Anne and Clarendon, a Ramsar site known for its rich biodiversity. The Hills to Ocean project will also assess the health and distribution of seagrass beds in the Ocherias Marine Park protected area and at the Helsha Bay and Half Moon Bay Portland Bight protected area in St. Catherine and Canada. From hills to ocean, the downstream effect of pollution and indiscriminate dumping of solid waste in the White River pose real threats and challenges for Ocherias, once a sleepy fishing village, now a bustling town with vibrant tourism and other commercial interests, and the community of fishermen who were there from the beginning. Belinda Collier Morrow, a diver and chair of the White River Marine Association, which has partnered with the fishermen in the area, to run the Ocherias Fish Sanctuary remembers a time when the coral reefs were healthy and the fish were in abundance. This project will definitely help us because we're totally aligned with what this project is doing. When people clear the lands, um, you know, that's also, you know, that's also coming into the river and smothering and getting out of sea, smothering the corals. And you see the river turns brown. You can, you know, you can see it, it goes for miles out to sea. When, you know, when we've had a big rain. So, you know, this project will work to address things like that. Better farming, you know, better farming practices. That will affect the river. That will in turn affect what we're doing out there. I think the Hills to Ocean is a great platform for us to really get information about how serious this is because we, as the White River Fish Sanctuary, as a local community-based group, you know, we can only do so much. Working in the sanctuary, it, it's an eye-opening uh, it teaches us to care, you know, the bad habits and, you know, the do and the don'ts, you know. If people have an understanding of what their actions do and why it matters, I think that is what is going to make a difference. The Planning Institute of Jamaica is the executing agency of this high-level Hills to Ocean project. A core project management unit collaborates and coordinates daily with technical experts from the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries Rural Agricultural Development Authority, RADA, 
and the Public Gardens Division, and from NEPA, the National Environment and Planning Agency. The implementation of this project is a direct investment in data collection and research and will strengthen the technical capacity of the National Environment and Planning Agency, ultimately bolstering its monitoring and early warning capabilities. Together, let us join hands and hearts to manage and protect Jamaica's land, wood, air and water. Given the new national campaign by the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries to grow smart and eat smart, we look forward to the new possibilities presented under this project to teach new techniques, build resilience and strengthen our island nation. Rather, aims through the promotion of integrated and sustainable land management practices as well as direct transfer of knowledge to achieve these goals. The Hills to Ocean project was developed through partnership and collaboration. The direct project beneficiaries are members of the communities in the three named WMUs, but the entire Jamaican population will benefit from its outcomes. The PIOJ looks forward to continued collaboration with residents, the European Union and state partners in making this project a success. We value and appreciate the cooperation with Jamaica regarding this project as it will allow us to further progress on the joint fight on climate change. Jamaica has proven to be a pioneer in the region regarding the subject and we are very happy to see that actions are taking place every day to improve the life of Jamaicans as well as of all those sharing this planet since climate change doesn't stop at national borders. Jamaica and its workforce are advancing quickly. Life-changing opportunities are arising. You need training and support. We are the Renewed Heart NSTA Trust, committed to providing new and emerging skills training and opportunities. Come to Heart. We'll help you claim your place in the workforce of the future. Words are, of course, the most powerful drug used by mankind. And whether spoken in a text or by very old means of communicating, a letter, getting one's message across is still very important. Here's how long-distance communication happened in early Jamaica. It's an outdated practice for many, and a much slower process when compared to the speed at which technology moves today. But its efforts in revolutionizing communication is certain, especially with key players at its helm helping to shape the industry. Sure, today you may prefer to hear news from your relative overseas through an email or catch up with your friends over a phone call. But in times past, these technologies seemed unattainable and postal services a need. It is believed by some researchers that the first credible claim for the development of a real postal system comes from ancient Persia, while others date the service back to Egypt. Whatever the case, through varied stages of development, the postal industry kept the lines of communication open across the world. In Jamaica, it began in the 1600s, making the island the first British colony to have an established post office, and the Royal Mail kept the industry booming. The Royal Mail, which started in the 1960s in Jamaica, quickly became one of the primary modes of transporting mails to and from post offices across the island. With its office located in Kingston, the Royal Mail collected letters or parcels from the Central Sorting Office and other post offices and agencies for distribution right across the country. Many Jamaicans can remember the Royal Mail vans moving letters around. Captained by Charles Moore, the reach of the company quickly grew as he sought to ensure his vans went to every nook and cranny of the island. He had all these little red buses that would go to pick up the mail 
and in the mornings we would go in early because there's a schedule for the drivers to take the little buses down to the central sorting office. From that they would collect the mail and then go deliver it where they were supposed to and then they would come back in the evening with the empty vans. The mail industry at that point in time was significant. It, it made a significant contribution to business development because that's how you got your correspondence. That's how you get a letter um, and the mail brought news. <laughs> the mail van used to also transport the daily newspapers to the rural part of Jamaica too. So the mail van meant that here was information, here is something happening. So I, I think it contributed to business development and the growth of the economy in those times. The mail van would go to the central sorting office you know, and pick up the mail and take it to the post offices out in the rural area. It's delivering a bundle of mail to different post office out in rural Jamaica or even in Kingston. Even if it picks it up from the central sorting office, um, it would take it to the half a tree post office and the Constant Spring post office and those post offices so that the mail could be sorted and then put in the mailboxes. But someone had to ensure the wheels continued turning. It was delivering mail in the 80s, carry mail and then we carry staff to and from. We carry the mail around, sometimes we carry the postman them and, or the post lady. Them go deliver parcel and them thing there. We have to drive the Royal Mail, go airport, from airport to CSO, and from there, sometimes we go Stone Hill, Kansas Spring. Remember them time you never have telegram, you know? So we always carry a parcel come at your house, we carry a register step come, and then we carry the parcel and you that pay, or you go down at the post office suite or something. Some red mailbox. They used to drop mail in there. And then we go there with the postman and clear them at evening time. After we clear the box, like um, 10 box at evening time, then we go CSO and with the postman and them um, finish. You know? Wilby's journey, as he said, was far and wide, even hitting some 58 kilometers outside of the capital. When we lived in, um, in Moning before we moved to Kingston, we knew about Royal Mail because that was how we know to go to the post office. We would know when the Royal Mail van came and when to go to the post office to see if there were any letters for us. You know, in those days, people wrote a lot more letters than they are writing now. Um, so I knew about Royal Mail from when I was a child and then met Mr. Moore, who was involved in the transportation of the, of the mail. Charles Moore, who charted the development of the Royal Mail and dominated as a contractor in the delivery of the Daily Gleaner, distinguished himself in the field of transportation. He was driven by a commitment to create access and opportunity for every Jamaican, which proved to be the rationale behind his choice of vehicle. You depended on the mail because you didn't have, you didn't have Wi-Fi. You didn't have, you either got a letter or you get a telegram. And he was instrumental in ensuring that people got their letters. And so the Royal Mail was all over the country. Anybody who grew up in the period, I, I, in the 60s, and 70s and early 80s would remember the red vans with royal mail growing up in country in rural jamaica we knew the schedule of the mail van and we knew when the mail van was going to come and therefore when we needed to run out the money to see if there was any mail and you could you know the jamaican expression you could put your pot on fire and know that the mail van was coming. And while those red vans are no longer in operation, they have played a key role in connecting people to each other and expanding Jamaica's mailing industry. In a race, a race against time, to reverse the effects of climate change by one simple action which has positive and enduring effects. That's right, plant a tree, leave a lasting legacy. 
Join the My Tree Legacy promotion by planting a tree at your alma mater and share your work with us. Every tree counts. Plant a tree today and keep climate change away. Nothing makes a day brighter than color. And a tree that can give vibrant bursts of color is something to talk about. Here's a picture perfect today with a picture perfect poet. They may bloom white, pink, and most definitely yellow flowers. They can be seen from near and far. Bees love them, birds adore them, and humans can't get enough of them. They need no introduction. After all, they're picture perfect. That's the poi. Jamaica is known as the land of wood and water. Its beauty is world renowned. Adding to that notoriety is the poi plant. Poi or tabebuya, as it is called, is a tropical plant that's native to the Caribbean, South and Central America. It's also known as tree of old or trumpet tree for its showy inflorescence. Poi come in three brilliant shades, white, pink, and yellow. The white poi is a rare find. The pink variant is the national flower of El Salvador and Paraguay, while the yellow poe is a Jamaican favorite. This broad-leaved perennial plant is a popular forest tree on the island. Trees can grow up to 150 feet tall, with a trunk averaging a foot in width. The yellow poe is the shortest of the family, followed by the pink strain with the white poe reaching the highest heights. The poi can be pruned to a desired height, so don't be surprised if you see some short trees around. In the rainy season, the tree is usually evergreen and unassuming. By the dry season, its deciduous nature appears. But that's when the magic happens. The leaves give away the bright bursts of yellow, pink and white clusters of flowers that blanket the tree and later carpet the ground. The large tubular-shaped corolla forms a collection of blossoms which group together to strike a fashionable pose. As blossoms scatter below, new fruit and foliage develop. The fruits of the poi tree are long slender capsules which split at maturity, exposing their winged seeds, perfect for dispersal. Though planted mostly as a brilliant showpiece, the poi may be used as a timber tree. Its durability, density, resistance to termites and general decay make it a hardy wood in the building and construction industry. Certain species of poi are also grown as honey plants by beekeepers. The tree also serves another purpose, a study reminder for students at the University of the West Indies Mona campus. Legend has it that if students have not begun to study for final exams by the time the poi blooms, then they are sure to fail. The next time you venture outside, be sure to be on the lookout for the poi and feast your eyes on one of nature's most conspicuous beauties. Or better yet, contact the forestry department to get a hold of your very own poi plant. It only takes two to three years to give you a spectacular flower display. Thank you for being with us today on Jamaica Magazine. Do join us again tomorrow for another interesting journey. Of course, you can visit our website, jis.gov.jm, for more news you can use. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thank you so much for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.